The wide patch of dirt surrounding the fire pit felt claustrophobic with the new arrivals, each more rough in appearance than the last. Bacard knew from his time in his dilapidated neighborhood in real life that poverty and difficult circumstances could work powerful transformations upon a once friendly face. These might be simple bandits, driven to scrounge as best they could, or they could be nefarious interlopers determined to wreak havoc upon anyone crossing their path. Such lines were messy in practice, but within the bounds of Akarian, NPCs tended toward the unambiguous. The sorcerer, Vorgir, rummaged through his sack and produced apples for his little party of ne'er-do-wells. Then, leering at Card, he said, You sure I can't tempt you with this sweet fruit? I'll pass. And your friend? Perk lay an emotionless bundle at his feet, save for her darting, angry eyes. Card decided she didn't look hungry for food so much as cheap, decisive vengeance. He shrugged at the sorcerer. Suit yourself! The man took several bites from his apple, watching them thoughtfully as he chewed and swallowed down. Seeing as how you're enjoying the hospitality of our fire, one of the others snickered. How about you tell us about you and your little friend? He's not asking about the dog, Card realized. Maybe Dog had caught wind of their captors and snuck off before they snatched up Herc, which would have been a bastardly thing to do. Or they hadn't considered the four-legged beast to be worth catching. What's to tell? said Card. I'm a humble hedge merchant and she's a farmer, basically. Not much farming or bargaining to be done in these parts, observed Forgear dryly. And where are your goods? I'm in between jobs at the moment. Ah, so you work for someone. You might say that. Which house, then? House? The sorcerer eyed him shrewdly. We are on Novastra territory. That means if you fly a trade, you're working for one of the pillar houses. Card considered lying, but only briefly. I'm independent. Ah, purred Vorgir. A freelancer, is it? A freelancer, repeated the homunculus, licking her lips. Does it taste of coin, eh, master? You don't mind if we turn out your pockets and help ourselves to a little donation, do you? Suit yourself, Card pursed his lips and folded his arms, waiting for the ugly little creature to rifle through his belongings. Fact was, anything he had he'd already handed over to his neighborhood gang rep for conversion into real-world credits. But you won't find much. The sorcerer gave a mute nod to the homunculus, who proceeded to crawl first over his back and then his lap, and did a very thorough job of poking her hands everywhere. She paused at the little pin on his lapel, the one gifted him by Rogers, and seemed to consider snatching it, but then moved on to his pockets. Ouch, complained Card. Your nails are sharp. The homunculus drew back and offered him a close look at her razor-like nails. Anything? asked Vorgir, who was already starting to sound bored. The little beast shook her head. Fine. Check the dwarf. This time, the homunculus turned up a few loose coins that Card couldn't make out in this light, but at a guess, wouldn't be worth much. Bring it, ordered the sorcerer, extending an unlit palm. The homunculus shuffled over, giggling frenetically, as she handed over the newfound treasures. He frowned down at his hand, then gave Card a sharp look. What is this? he demanded. I don't know, replied Card. I can't really see what you've got. Vordgear stood abruptly and summoned a flame in his free hand. Don't play stupid with me. What is this? Money, isn't it? Yes, yes said the sorcerer, his agitation only becoming more apparent. But from where, hmm? I recognize neither the manner of this metal nor the symbols on each face. Oh, that, replied Card, realizing he should probably have more satisfying answers. But the truth was the truth. Honestly, my life is such that I don't get many chances to appreciate the money I make before it's out of my hands again. One of the goons guffawed loudly. <laughs> Ain't that the way it goes? 